So I decided to read Susan Collins' favorite books to find out what inspired her and The Hunger Games. I always thought the love triangle in The Hunger Games was just because it's YA and that's what YA books should do, but maybe it's actually because of this. Did she get her, did she get her inspiration from that? Which really just makes me look at The Hunger Games in a different way. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I always am looking for new books that I'm really gonna like and if I really like a book like The Hunger Games I'm always trying to find out, oh if I like this book then which other books would I like and if I like this author which other books would I like and I recently just came to the conclusion is wait, these authors who write the books that I really like they also have a bunch of favorite books. Maybe if I read those, I will find new books that I would love and gain some insight in where their inspiration comes from. So in honor of the release of The Ballad of Sungbirds and Snakes, which comes out in one week <laughs> when I'm uploading this, I thought it would be interesting to read Susan Collins's favorite books, especially because she has such an interesting background and we already know a lot about where she got her information from. So I thought that would just be super interesting to read her books, maybe hopefully find some new favorites for me, and then also kind of speculate about the similarities between these books and the Hunger Games and where she got her inspiration from. So in this video I'm gonna talk about five books and about those books I'm just gonna give you my opinion of what I thought of them and I'm going to talk about just little things in those books that reminded me of the Hunger Games. But before we get into those books let me just give you a little bit of history on Suzanne Collins. Suzanne Collins was born on August 10th 1962 in Hartford, Connecticut. She's of course known for her Hunger Games trilogy published first in 2008, but in 2003 she actually published the first book in her other series, Gregor and the Overlander, the first book of the Underland Chronicles, which is a middle grade series about a world beneath New York. Her inspiration for The Hunger Games came to her one day when she was zapping through TV channels and realized that there wasn't much difference in the way TV covered the Iraq war and reality TV shows. The two began to blur in an unsettling way and so the idea for The Hunger Games was formed. She says, we have so much programming coming at us all the time. Is it too much? Are we becoming desensitized to the entire experience? I can't believe a certain amount of that isn't happening. Susan Collinson's father was an Air Force officer and he was very open talking about his time in the war, especially the Vietnam War. And he talked about this a lot with his kids. Susan Collinson's goal with all her books was to touch on those subjects of war. She says, if we introduce kids to these ideas earlier, we could get a dialogue about war going earlier and possibly it would lead to more solutions. So it's obvious that Susan Collins has very clear inspirations for The Hunger Games, but I just want to see how those inspirations are reflected in her favorite books. So her favorite books, how did I find those? <laughs> I just googled and there's actually a Bustle article where she talks about 12 of her favorite books of all time. So I chose the ones that I thought would be the most interesting in regards to talking about The Hunger Games and I also chose the ones that I personally was the most interested in reading because also another goal of this video is for me to find new favorite books because I loved The Hunger Games so much. And if you're a regular on this channel you might actually recognize a lot of the books that I'm going to talk about because I know usually with these types of videos, secret TBRs, people keep it a secret which books I'm reading but I just I can't do that like I'm on this platform to talk about the books that I'm reading so I have already talked about all the books that I'm going to mention but I promise you that all the things that I'm going to be saying in this video are things that I haven't said yet in other videos because I have like new different opinions that I have not shared yet in other videos so don't worry about that. Also just a heads up I'm gonna be avoiding spoilers for Susan Collins's favorite books as much as possible so let's begin with the first books that I read that are Susan Collins's favorites. The Hunger Games is a dystopian book so the first two books that I want to talk about are also very important dystopian books and that is A Brave New World and 1984. Are we surprised that these two books are some of Susan Collins' favorites? I'm not. I actually already read Brave New World last year but I still wanted to include it in this video because she mentions it together with 1984. With regards to The Hunger Games it's actually quite interesting to talk about them together but we'll get to that. And I did read 1984 for this video and I really enjoyed both books so I really should get just a physical copy of 1984 so I can have them both. 
because I really like both of these stories. But let's just see what Susan Collins says about these books in, in this article. In an interview with The Independent, Collins mentions her inspiration for The Hunger Games came from the fear of television and false media. Sounds kind of like 1984 and Brave New World, which, no coincidence, are some of her absolute favorites. If you're in need of a new dystopian world with extremely problematic governments, you'll want to keep a copy of these novels on your shelf. And yet again, I am reminded of the fact that I only have a copy of Brave New World and not of 1984. So before we get into my theories, let me just tell you what these books are about. 1984 is a story that mostly follows the oppression of totalitarian governments. We follow our main character Winston as he grapples with wanting to resist the party that is basically gaslighting everyone, instilling certain thoughts into everyone. But on the other hand, if he resists, it might get him killed and it would be more peaceful to just live according to everyone's rules. And that's what the story is about. It's wonderful, absolutely loved this story. It's a really great story about the importance of critical thinking. Then on the other hand we have Brave New World, which is also a dystopian story but it's way more presented as something utopian. It is a critique mostly, at least according to me, on consumerism. The characters in this book are completely consumed with entertainment and fun. Everything revolves around having a good time, efficiency, no tragedy, no sadness, everything is just great and perfect and beautiful. And because of that, the people kind of stop thinking for themselves. And I also really loved this book and I gave it four stars as well. I think I like Brave New World a little bit better than 1984, mostly because just the critique of consumerism resonated with me a little bit more, but they're both very important stories and they tackle different topics and I both highly recommend them. I'm really glad that I read both of these. But what really struck me with these books is the clear inspiration I think The Hunger Games got from them. Although the dystopian worlds of both of these books are so different, you know, with 1984 being very grim and dark because of this totalitarian government, and then we have Brave New World, which is just very opulent and extravagant, I think we see both of those types of worlds in the Hunger Games, because all the districts, they really live under this tyranny of the capital, this totalitarian government. But on the other hand, we have the capital, which I think really reflects the lifestyle that is presented in Brave New World, full of, you know, the beautiful makeup and the extravagant physiques and entertainment. And I like that in Hunger Games you can kind of see both sides, both the people that are at the bottom and are the victim of totalitarianism and the elite that are so consumed with their opulence that they kind of forget to think for themselves and think that reality TV of kids killing each other is somehow fun and entertaining. But let's go into 1984 a little bit more. I was struck with how similar 1984 is to every other YA dystopian that I read. Just the beats of the story are so similar. You know, there's a resistance and everything. And I just kind of wondered that maybe it could be because The Hunger Games is probably quite inspired by 1984 and because The Hunger Games has kind of become the blueprint of every YA dystopian that came out after that. Maybe that's why all YA dystopian resembles 1984 so much, or all the other YA dystopian books have also gotten their influence from 1984. If you had like your YA dystopian phase, I highly recommend reading this book. You know, aside from the fact that it's just a very important book with a very important message, it's also fun to see all the similarities. There's even a love triangle. <laughs> I'm gonna try to explain this love triangle without giving spoilers, but Winston, our main character, has a love triangle between Julia, who is a very rebellious girl. She kind of represents the rebellious side that Winston has. She also wants to join the resistance. And on the other one, we have Winston's wife, who represents, I think, just compliance to the government, and she listens to everything the party tells her. In this book, it's very clear that the love triangle just represents the choice our main character, Winston, has to make make his dilemma between resisting and not resisting. And I realized that that's also how it is in The Hunger Games, because in The Hunger Games we have Katniss who has to choose between Peeta and Gil, and Gil kind of represents her old life, her hunting life, her life in a district, whereas Peeta represents someone who is very different to her, but he has personality traits that actually complement her. You know how she's talking in the end of Mockingjay about how he's her dandelion in the wind. We all remember that one. <laughs> and I just realized that maybe 
that's more inspired by 1984 because I always thought the love triangle in the Hunger Games was just because it's YA and that's what YA books should do but maybe it's actually because of this maybe it's because she got some inspiration of 1984 I can't read her mind but I wouldn't put it past her if she was a little bit more inspired by 1984 and didn't just think oh it's YA so I'm just gonna put a little love triangle in there there's more there's more I have notes I have notes. Okay, and the last thing that I wanted to talk about in 1984 is just this little detail that I mentioned. But in the book, there's a moment where Winston and his love interest see a thrush and they kind of think about, oh, you know, why is this bird singing? Like, to who is this bird even singing? And he worries if maybe there is a hidden microphone in the thrush. And I just, it, it reminded me of the Jabber Chase, you know, how they can how they're trained to kind of work like microphones. So I was just wondering like, oh, did she, did she get her, did she get her inspiration from that? Or am I delusional right now? Could be both really. So that's all I have to say about 1984 and Brave New World. These are both books I highly recommend. I totally understand how these are on Susan Collins's favorite books list. If you like The Hunger Games, if you like some YA dystopian, you gotta read these books. Okay, so Suzanne Collins' next favorite book that I chose is one that, out of all of the five books that I'm going to be talking about, is the least obviously related to The Hunger Games, and I have it on my shelf. It's one of the only two books that I actually own, and that is A Wrinkle in Time by Madeleine Langle. This is a science fiction middle grade book, so this was obviously, I think, one of Suzanne Collins' favorite children books. The website doesn't really say a lot about it. This is what I found on the website. In this dark and stormy classic, two siblings are in a desperate search for their missing scientist father, but the search brings them through space and time to a new planet. Goosebumps creator R. Al Stein believes that Meg is a precursor to heroines such as Katniss from The Hunger Games, and I definitely agree with him. Meg has to make hard choices in a dystopian setting and face some life and death consequences. See any resemblance to Katniss? So this one actually surprised me, because first of all, I think... This is not a dystopian, like it's science fiction, but it's not necessarily dystopian because they it just takes place in our world, but then they go on this <laughs> wonderful crazy journey through space and time to different dimensions and different planets, and that was really cool. And I guess these other planets have dictatorships, but it doesn't make this story a dystopian in my opinion. I enjoyed it, but I didn't think it was fantastic. It's a fun middle grade story. It's very weird. I know a lot of people DNF'd it because they couldn't get through the weirdness. And I kind of understand that it's very 60s. Like you can really tell this was written in the late 60s. It just feels like the author was on an acid trip when she wrote this. And honestly, I'm kind of here for it. It's a very whimsical weird story that to me reminded me a little bit more of things like Libra Dugo and Sarah J Maas's writing, not necessarily Suzanne Collins, but of course not everything Suzanne Collins likes has to be found in her own works. Maybe your love for science fiction started with this book because you know like books like The Hunger Games that are dystopians, that's just a subgenre of science fiction. And what I personally really like the most about this book is that it has, it's a science fiction book with a girl main character, which I think for science fiction books and for like other classic dystopian books that I've read, is not seen very often, but this one has a main character that is a girl and she really likes science and math. And I really liked seeing that, which definitely matches up with the trend in YA dystopian that the main characters are mostly girls. There's definitely a big theme of resisting in this book. So it's clear that Susan Collins from an early age on just really liked stories about resisting. But yeah, let's just move on to the next book. Okay, so before we move on to the last book, which according to many people is the most similar to The Hunger Games, I want to talk about book four, which I have actually already read a year ago, but I still wanted to include it in this video because I think it's one of the most important ones to talk about, and that is Slaughterhouse-Five. Slaughterhouse-Five is in its essence an anti-war book that basically focuses on Kurt Vonnegut's his own experience in the bombing of Dresden in the Second World War. But it's also a kind of absurdist science fiction novel because our main character basically becomes unstuck in time so he w just unwillingly starts going back and forth between the present and the past and his time during the war and he can't control it so through that it's kind of a narrative device to see how he experienced all the things through his life and on top of that he gets abducted by aliens <laughs> 
and it's very weird. Which sounds all very absurd and comical, which it is in a way, but it's also very clearly an anti-war book that's trying to show the horrific sides of war. Which, knowing what we know about Susan Collins, I think makes a lot of sense that this is one of her favorite books. This is what the article says about it. The website says, Collins' father was a Vietnam veteran and while growing up she heard quite a few war stories, so it's no surprise that Slaughterhouse-Five is one of her all-time favorite books. Centering on the Dresden bombing, this novel centers on a character unstuck in time and travels in and out of moments in his life. It's an addicting book you'll have a hard time putting down. I feel like learning about what Susan Collins' favorite books are and reading those books, I now understand that The Hunger Games is also, in its essence, a book about war. And now I also understand why it's young adults, because as I said in the intro, Susan Collins's goal was to educate people at a young age about war. So I think that's why she writes young adult and children's stories that tackle those subjects. And that's something I never really noticed about The Hunger Games, especially reading it just <laughs> as a teenager. It was mostly just like fun adventure, dystopian. Maybe she wants to do what, what her father did to her when he educated her about the war. Because this is what she says about her father. I believe he felt a great responsibility and urgency about educating his children about war. He would take us frequently to places like battlefields and war monuments. It would start with back with whatever had precipitated the war and moved up through the battlefield. You were standing in and through that and after that. It was a very comprehensive tour guide experience. So throughout our lives we basically heard about war. Which really just makes me look at The Hunger Games in a different way. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that doing this video is really helping me understand The Hunger Games and Susan Collins more. Hopefully doing this video can give me some little extra context when I start reading The Ballad of Sunbirds and Snakes. I'm really excited to see what she's gonna do with The Ballad of Sunbirds and Snake and how war is going to play a role in that book. Hi guys, so I decided to do the last book in vlog style because this is the book that, in my opinion, might be kind of the closest to The Hunger Games in terms of plot, and that is The Lord of the Flies, which I'm going to listen to on audiobook. The only thing that I know about this is that it's about an island with boys who are stranded there and eventually they start getting turned up against each other and start fighting and doing all sorts of weird things. I don't think I'm gonna enjoy this book because it sounds like it's going to be just a very bleak look on human nature, you know, like expecting everyone to start fighting and going against each other. So I'm not super looking forward to reading this, but I do want to read this. I already wanted to read this before I knew it was Suzanne Collins' favorite book, but I'm going to really document my experience reading this book because I feel like that's the most interesting way of getting my opinions on this one. Hey, hey, I am almost halfway through The Lord of the Flies already because it's actually quite a short book. It's only a six hour audiobook and if you then listen to it on one and a half speeds, it goes pretty fast. And I'm gonna admit, so far, I have no thoughts. Just really no thoughts. It's just a bunch of kids, a bunch of boys on this deserted island and I can see that something bad's probably gonna happen, but so far it's just not really impressing me, to be honest. But maybe it's gonna come towards the end. So right now I'm about like 60% into the audiobook of Lord of the Flies. I do have to say, I know that I said that this book sounded the most similar to The Hunger Games and also the article in which I found this is one of Suzanne Collins' favorite books. It says that this is one of the most like similar ones to the trilogy because, you know, on face value, just a bunch of kids slash teenagers in like a location and then and then they kind of start just like setting each other up against each other. That sounds very similar but now that I'm reading it it's completely different because the Hunger Games you have a bunch of teenagers all together that have to kill each other like that's the goal even though they might not want to except for maybe some people the careers they only want it because they know they have something to gain out of it that being a life full of fame and wealth so the only reason that they're going after each other is because they have to whereas in the Lord of the Flies they have absolutely no incentive to be terrible to each other like they should be working together but despite that they're still mean to each other so it's like the complete opposite of each other actually um, I don't really know what I think of that so far, but I'll get back to that. Okay guys, I finished The Lord of the Flies. Let's talk about it. I'm just gonna 
put you out of here. Okay, so it's actually already a few days later because I needed some time to recollect my thoughts, but I finished the book super quickly, like two days. Overall, I'm not a huge fan of this book, but I think that's mostly just very personal preferences because to me it's just a little a little too negative of a story for me to really enjoy it, but I think this is just something that's very subjective to me. But I still stand by my idea that I think that in ideas it's kind of opposite to the Hunger Games. The whole theme of the Hunger Games I think is actually that choice of actually deciding to work together even though the capital tells you to murder each other. <laughs> I just always have to think about this scene in The Hunger Games where Rue and Katniss are talking about their lives in their own respective districts and Katniss remarks that that would probably not be broadcasted by the capital because they don't want people to know that it's possible to learn about each other's districts and there are just a lot of other things that tell me that The Hunger Games really is more about actually coming together and working together when you're supposed to not do that. I'd say there's definitely a lot more hope in The Hunger Games and I really like that. <laughs> but this book is still one of Susan Collins' face, which is the most important thing in this video. So on the website of Bustle, it says this about The Lord of the Flies. If you read Lord of the Flies in middle grade or high school, you know the extreme similarities this and The Hunger Games trilogy have to one another. A group of young stranded boys are left to survive on an island and it's only a matter of time before fight breaks out and corruption spreads. They didn't broadcast it on television, but the kids can get just as brutal in the story as the tributes in The Hunger Games. And although that's indeed true, I still stand by my idea that the kids getting brutal in Lord of the Flies is... They're just doing that even though they're supposed to work together, there's no one up top telling them to do that, whereas the kids and the tributes in The Hunger Games, they're getting brutal with each other because there's this overarching capital telling them to kill each other. <laughs> I recently learned that The Birth of Flies is also very much a book about war, that William Golding wrote it about these teenage boys to kind of show how childish war actually is. And knowing that, it does make a lot of sense to me that this book is so special to Susan Collins. Actually, now that I think about it, I think Lord of the Flies might actually be the most similar to Slaughterhouse Five out of all the books that I've read. More similar than I actually thought it would be, because they're both maybe in a way anti-war novels. I just personally enjoyed Slaughterhouse Five a little bit more plot-wise and just story-wise. So although I didn't really enjoy Lord of the Flies, I gave it two stars. After thinking about it a little bit, I do appreciate it for its empty anti-war message and I understand that it's important to Susan Collins and it totally matches up with the theme that Susan Collins' writing is so focused on war and war topics and that's definitely reflected in her book taste. That was it. Those were all the books that I read that were Susan Collins' favorite books. I just want to let you guys know that my Etsy store is still open so if you want to buy one of my three bookmarks you can! I ship internationally and the link is always in my description. Honestly, I had so much fun making this video. I've been working up to making this video for a few months now because I like to spread out those books over multiple months and I had so much fun. Honestly, reading authors' favorite books is such an interesting thing to kind of find out their inspiration and where they get their ideas. So if you guys like this video, I might do this more often. I would love to find out what Lee Bardugo's favorite books are because she's my favorite author. <laughs> I think what I learned about this video most is that Susan Collins very clearly derives a lot of her inspiration from the classic dystopian books and that war has just played a huge role in her life because of her father, but that's also reflected in the books that she reads and also in the books that she writes. And of course, I cannot look into Susan Collins' head, so this is all just speculation, but I did have a lot of fun with it. So definitely just let me know in the comments if you have any other insights and let me know if you liked this video. I really hope you did and I will see you soon in another video. Goodbye! What really striked me, struck me, struck, struck me, just to give you a little bit of a background in <laughs> So that's all I have to say about 1984 and Brave New World. <laughs> you know, there's even a resistance that Winston's wants to Winston's wants to join. Winston wants to join. That's a tongue twister. Winston wants to join. Meg has to make hard choices in a dystopian setting and face some life and death. And... For this shot, I have to stand on my toes 
because if I stand normal, it looks like this and there's way too much space here. So now my feet hurt because I've been standing on my toes all the time. <laughs>